the very first episode of Painting Pretty with Kristen Lynn Arts. In today's episode, we're going to talk all about color. One of the biggest questions I get from you guys is about the colors that I use. What color names, what brands, what mediums do I mix them with? So we're going to go through all of that today. I'm going to start by showing you some of the tools and supplies I use to mix a palette. Then I'm actually going to mix a palette with you. Um, all of these colors are ones that I use in the majority of my paintings. They, I use them all over and over again. It's really like my traditional color palette. Uh, these are colors that I not only use in my cloudscapes, but also in a lot of my portraits. And as we're mixing, I'll actually flash the color names across the screen, just like Bob Ross. Uh, basically, these names are kind of tricky to pronounce and tricky to spell, so I just want you to get the visual. Uh, so that's where we are headed today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first tool I'm going to go over is probably the most important tool. It's the star of the show, and that is the paint. So I use oil paint. I've been using oil paint consistently for probably the past five years, but I have spent a very long time using acrylic paint as well. I have a lot of experience with acrylic as well. And if you do use acrylic paint, I still think this tutorial will be helpful for you because a lot of the colors are exactly the same. Um, I prefer oil, but um, I do love acrylic and with acrylic, the one thing I miss, you actually can get some brighter colors that don't exist in oil world. Like you can get the true neons and I do miss those, but I still prefer oil paint. Um, the brand isn't necessarily important. Uh, most of my paints are Gamblin, but I use some Windsor and Newton colors. I have some other random brands that I use. I just happen to have a lot of Gamblin. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily matter for what we're doing today. So that's the paint. Okay, so the next tool we're gonna go over is the palette knife. So um, you really don't need to invest a lot of money in a palette knife, but it is important to have one. Uh, I, probably eight, 10 years ago, I don't know, I bought a pack of six of these. I got varying sizes at Joanne Fabrics and I think I spent like under $10 and I'm still using those knives. Uh, so they last a long time. As long as you keep them clean, take care of them, they'll last you a really long time. Uh, but it is really important to have these when you're, you're mixing oil paint. Um, obviously once I start painting, then I'm mixing more with the brushes themselves. But to mix my initial colors, I always use a palette knife. Okay, the next tool we're going to talk about is gloves. So these aren't necessary, but they're really nice to have. Um, if you tend to be a messier painter, definitely good to invest in some gloves. They're not expensive. Um, I sometimes wear them when I'm mixing paint, but I don't really wear them when I'm painting. But again, I'm not the messiest painter that I know a lot of people are. So maybe consider getting gloves. Okay, so the next tool, pretty self-explanatory what this is for, but paper towels, uh, good to have when you're mixing paint so you can wipe the palette knife off. Knife off. Um, I like to use plain paper towels without a print, but that's basically just because they look better in videos and in photos, but you don't need to be that picky. Okay, so the next tool is uh, Again, pretty self-explanatory, mason jars. I have a zillion of these in my house because um, I actually use them in the kitchen quite a bit too for uh, juicing and making smoothies. Once I retire them from the kitchen, I move them into the studio and this is what I use for all of my painting mediums. Um, they're super cheap. You can get them at the grocery store or Target, um, but they're a good investment. Okay, so the next tool that I use pretty much every day that I'm in the studio is terpenoid. So terpenoid is a turpentine substitute. Uh, it, it serves the same purpose as turpentine, but basically without the smell. This is basically odorless. And if you've never smelled real turpentine, it is potent stuff. It's, it's pretty horrible. I can't even be around it. But um, 
This same brand, actually, they make a natural terpenoid, which is even a little better for the environment, which eventually I will probably move over and start using that. I just have a lot of this. Um, so once I run out of this, I'm gonna probably move over to the natural terpenoid. Um, but basically what I use this for is uh, when I'm mixing colors, I use this to help thin out the paint a little bit. Some colors come out of the tube really thick and you like can barely move them. I like to have a slightly thinner paint, so I use this just to, to thin down the paint a little bit. Um, some colors come out of the tube and they don't need that, but um, most colors need a, a little help to thin them down. So that's what I use this for. Um, it, this does have a lot of other uses uh, in the studio. I use this to, while I'm painting, to continue to thin down the color, but I also use this just to do quick, quick cleanings on my brushes. Um, I have other soap and things that I use to, to clean my brushes a little more thoroughly, but just for quick cleaning, uh, this is really helpful. Okay, so the next tool is one of the most important ones and it, there's a lot of different options out there for you. So I think it takes some trial and error as a painter to kind of figure out what you like to use. Um, and I actually use a few different ones and that's the palette. Um, so if you follow me for a while, you've definitely seen me use these plastic palettes. Um, I have a few different colors of them. I use, I actually make these myself and I sell them in my shop. So that's why you see them so often. But um, I like to use these when I'm working on bigger pieces. Um, they're really easy to hold. They're comfortable to hold in your hand. Um, but when I'm mixing my initial palette, I don't use this. I actually use a paper palette. Um, this is just a pad of disposable palette paper. Um, and this is good just because you can get a little messier with it and then throw it out when you're done. So I'll typically mix my colors on here and then I'll transfer them to this and start working on the painting. Um, and they actually make these in a couple different colors. They make these in gray also. Some people like mixing on gray, um, but this one here is white. So those are all the tools you'll need. Let's get started mixing. Okay, so we're ready to start mixing. We're all set up with our palette paper, our mason jar with terpenoid, the paper towel, and our palette knife. Now you'll notice, I'm not sure how well you can see this in the video, but I have white tape on either edge of my palette. Uh, that's only for the video so the paper doesn't slide around. There's really no need for the tape otherwise. Um, I pre-squeezed out all of the paint ahead of time. I typically always do this before I start mixing anything just because squeezing the paint out is one of the messiest parts of the process. My paint tubes are covered in paint and usually um, mediums and it gets all over my hands. So I like to squeeze the paint out, wash my hands and then start mixing. Um, okay, so we're ready to start. Okay, so the first color is titanium white. It's obviously a super important color and I use it in every single painting. I go through more tubes of white than any other color. I use it to create the pastel and dusty colors uh, that I use and you'll see me use it a lot today. So basically what I'm doing to most of these colors right now is I'm just adding a bit of the terpenoid to um, thin out the color a little bit. Um, some colors need it more than others. And then I wipe the, the palette knife off. Okay, the next color here is called Caucasian Flesh Tone. Now this is a Gamblin specific color. There are plenty of other options in other brands. Um, Naples Yellow is a more traditional color that's similar and would be available in any brand. It's really just about finding a good ivory shade. Um, I use this a lot to mute other colors and you'll see me use it a few other times today. Um, sometimes I'll also mix this with white. Actually, I'll do that right now just to show you. Um, just to lighten it up a bit before I put it on the palette. Okay, the next color is cadmium yellow medium. I prefer the medium cad over light because it's a little darker and more golden. I prefer um, more golden warm tones in my painting, I guess because I really like the sunshine, honestly.
Okay, so the next color up is Indian yellow. So here we're going back to the same idea. I really like these warmer golden colors. This one's a little darker um, than cad yellow. So I usually just mix it with a little bit of white. Um, it'll still be darker than the cad yellow. It's just usually a little dark um, straight out of the tube. And actually probably got a little too much white here. I'm gonna add a little more of the Indian yellow here just so you can see what this looks like straight out of the tube. Um, it's a little bit of a translucent color, so adding the white to it helps make it more opaque also. All right, that's Indian yellow. Okay, up next we have cadmium orange. So orange is a very, very easy color to mix, honestly. Um, going back to elementary school here, mix yellow and red and you'll get orange. Cad yellow and cad red make a beautiful orange. The only reason I use orange straight out of the tube um, is because I use a lot of orange. It's just more economical for me to buy orange paint. Um, if you're just getting started painting and you don't wanna invest in too many colors, I think orange is a color to skip if you have a good yellow and red. Okay, I'm actually gonna skip this next pile and jump to a very important color. Um, or at least a very important color in my world, and that's pink. I have searched far and wide uh, for the perfect pink. Pink isn't a color that exists uh, like in traditional oil painting. Master painters didn't have pink paint as an option. It's something that was created along the way throughout time, and I found one that I love. There are a zillion different pink shades um, and purples, and like everything in between pink and purple. Um, so I encourage you to experiment and find the one that's right for you. But for me, it's this Winsor & Newton uh, color called Permanent Rose. I really wanted like a bubblegum pink, a bubblicious Barbie meets Britney Spears sassy pink, and this is it. Um, it's great straight out of the tube, as you'll see here, but it's even better when it's mixed with a little white. Uh, like I said, there are other options for pink. Alizarum Crimson mixed with white creates a nice dusty rose color, but it's not quite as sassy as the permanent rose and white. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back to this pile here. This is a color I've been using a lot lately, and this is a combination of the cadmium orange my, and my favorite permanent rose, and then a little white. It creates a really beautiful coral color. Um, it's just really, really pretty. And I'm basically obsessed with it right now. And you can obviously make it a little more pink by adding more pink or make it more orange, um, darker or lighter with the white, um, but really, really pretty color. Okay, up next we have Cadmium Red Light. This is another part of the Cadmium family that has some options of lights and darks. I prefer Cad, prefer cad Red Light just because I prefer orangier reds. I don't really like darker Christmassy reds. Um, again, this is because I like my, my paintings lighter and brighter and Cad Red Light seems to work really well. Um, I will say this is like a very potent color. It's just a really strong pigment. So anything you mix it with, it's kind of going to overpower it. So you really don't need a lot of this color. Um, so your, your tube of cad red should last you a really long time. Okay. So next is another color I would consider to be one of the most important colors or my most important colors It's not necessarily because I think it's beautiful or anything like that. Although it is, it's just, it just complements a lot of other colors really well. And I use it um, to mix a lot of my shadow colors. Uh, and it's called Dioxazine Purple. Again, there are a lot of purple options out there. Cobalt Purple is really nice as well. But again, I just always stick stick with this um, Dioxazine Purple and you'll see how I use it with other colors uh, in a few minutes. But here, I'm just mixing it with a little purple so you can see what a pretty color it is. Typically, I will put this on my palette two ways. I'll put it straight out of the tube and then I'll actually 
mix it with the white because I just use this color so much. It, it's helpful for me to have both options on my palette. Okay, up next is another really, really important color in my world. I use it a lot and I go through a lot of it and that's cobalt blue. Again, there are a lot of blue options. Uh, phalo blue is another popular one. I just really think cobalt blue is a beautiful straight out, like beautiful straight out of the tube, as well as mixed with white as I'm gonna do right now. Again, I think this is just like, if you want that really beautiful bright blue sky, uh, this is just a really clean, refreshing looking blue. Okay, so keeping with the cobalt family, I don't, I don't use this color all of the time, but it's definitely beautiful and that's cobalt teal. Um, it's definitely my go-to teal when I need a color in the teal family. It looks really pretty with white as well. But this is actually how it looks straight out of the tube. Really, really pretty. Okay. So next we have a green color that I'm gonna mix with cobalt, teal, and cad yellow. Um, I'm not really a big green person, but occasionally I need it when I'm painting flowers and things like that. I do have some green tubes of paint, but I hardly ever touch them. I find that cobalt, teal, and cad yellow make a really nice green. Uh, also cobalt blue and cad yellow make a nice shade. But again, this is cobalt teal and cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow medium. Okay, so up next we have Burnt Sienna. So we're getting into the brown family. Again, I don't consider this my favorite color family, but it's important and I do pretty much use the browns in almost every painting because they help create the darks and the shadows. The darks and the shadows are important because they make your, your lighter, brighter colors really pop. Burnt Sienna isn't super dark. It's just a good in the middle brown. Typically also it's a little thick coming out of the tube. So I definitely mix this with the turpinoid just to thin it out a little bit. Okay, so up next, I have a mix of a few colors here. Uh, the one which we haven't talked about yet is Burnt Umber. This is a really, really dark brown color. Um, it's on the left here. And I use this pretty much in every painting in some way, shape, or form. So here I'm actually gonna mix Burnt Umber with a few other colors. Sometimes I use it straight out of the tube, but the, the way I use it more often is to create black. I typically don't use black paint. I like to mix my black because it creates a more interesting color. I think solid black paint can just feel a little flat, but there are times it makes sense to use it. Um, but today here I'm mixing the burnt umber with the cobalt blue and the dioxazine purple to create the black color. If you want it a little warmer, I suggest using more of the burnt umber. Um, if you want a cooler black, you can use more of the blue. Okay, so the last two colors are um, some colors I use to create um, some of the shadows in not only my cloudscapes, but also my portraits. The first one uh, is again going to be that dioxazine purple, this time mixed with the flesh tone or Naples yellow, whichever, whichever one you're using, and then titanium white. This is just gonna create a really cool muted color to use in some of the shadows um, of the painting and to create interest in depth.
And this is um, still looking really purple. I'm actually, I'm gonna just mix it. I'm gonna grab a little of that flesh color and mix a little more just to mute it a little more. Um, the dioxazine purple is a really strong color as well and it'll kind of take over. So you just have to find the right balance. And again, these are changes and tweaks you can always make as you're painting, of course. You can grab that color with your paintbrush as you're painting too. Um, but sometimes it's good to sort out some of these things before you start painting. Okay, so the very last color here is using the same idea. It's a mix of cobalt, cobalt blue, flesh tone, and titanium white to create another shadow color. This one's just a little icier than the purple option. And another way to kind of um, create some interest with these colors um, outside of the flesh, sometimes you can mix um, the oranges and the yellows with these, obviously like using complementary colors to kind of mute these colors a bit. And that's gonna create a really good shadow color. Okay, so now we have a really complete palette of color. Now I would typically transfer these colors to my oval palette and then start painting. So that's it guys. I could probably do 10 more of these videos and dive deeper into color, but this should be a good starter video if you're interested in painting the type of things that I paint. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments, and I will see you next time on Painting Pretty with Kristen Lynn Art. Bye guys!